guys. Um, just got here with Oliver. And uh, just going to get a few things out of the trailer. Uh, just made a run, pretty big run for my brother-in-law yesterday with his new trailer. Now, I didn't have a chance to get any other on video, but um, I think his unit is actually longer than ours. 37 uh, foot from... You know just the trailer portion without the tongue and this one's 33 ish plus the tongue makes it 37 so it was a lot to tow but did good the old ram did good the diesel uh, did okay towing gas mileage about 12 can't complain about that with some hills um, and then not towing I got it up to about 18 which I'm really happy about that um, but wanted to bring you guys back out here and just do this quick video to one I'm picking a couple things up and then the other part is um, I think I solved the um, inverter controller problem if you guys remember maybe you have to go back a few videos um, I was struggling with that I was doing a lot of troubleshooting and it started the battery started having issues which I kind of suspected might be the issue anyways um, I went with an AGM the ever start I think it is from Walmart um, just because I kind of wanted one right away and because we got a trip coming up big 10 day trip which I'm going to try and do as many videos as I can for you guys but this is the one I really think is solved now the Xantrex Pro XM 1800 controller um, it basically anytime you put a load on it or almost anytime you turn it on it would beep um, and it was showing fault it would go to a fault condition which I was getting ready to reset it and about you know just about a week later the battery started having problems we couldn't take the slide out when we wanted to um, so switched out the battery it's been fine ever since knock on wood um, and then back on the solar thing here the solar charger controller you can say we're showing all green on the battery and it shows we are charging 100% um, our 0 0.3 amp I guess that's how much it's charging with um, I'm not sure if that's how much we're charging with or that's the load okay 0 0.4 amp hours is maybe what I have left I'm not sure about those parts you guys leave a comment if you know I haven't done a ton of research on that I'm just kind of really happy that this other issue is potentially resolved now I do leave this off when I leave the trailer but I'm gonna put a little load on it real quick I'm out here just picking a few things up so but I wanted you guys keep this video going so you guys can stay in the loop with everything we've been trying to do and are doing etc um, oh we're also getting some I uh, actually have one I'll put it on do a video a separate video the the rugs on these stairs because we found out on our last trip was just a little one day trip that coming down these and uh, socks or whatever is not a pleasant experience. So, um, I'm going to put a quick load on this just kind of test my theory. I'm going to turn that on because I know this is a hot battery driven um, plug here and if you guys saw the other video Anytime I turn this on, any of this, this now this I'm turning on is the solar 
not I'm sorry the solar I got solar in the brain um, this is actually the uh, satellite unit uh, which is weird plugged in nothing oh that one you have to do a quick little power on I'm not gonna hit scan normally you hit scan that's a separate uh, video really how to run that I've done a video on that a while ago um, but I'm not sure if I posted that one actually I'll check it out make sure it's posted or maybe do another video what you do on this one separate subject again it's on the satellite you hit scan twice let me just do it it's not gonna hurt you hit scan twice and it starts scanning for the satellites it can find yeah it's pretty interesting um, nice and cool out here right now that's why I came out here this morning but uh, yep I just need to pick a few things up I'm gonna be right back alright guys um, I went ahead and plugged in the direct TV unit um, We'll let it come up and we'll see what satellites were found. Um, I'm actually sitting, I don't know if I explained this to you guys, but I'm actually right now boondocking in a storage facility. Pretty interesting, you know. Um, I actually, um, you know, realized that now that the battery situation hopefully is resolved, and the controller, you know, the inverter controller is what I showed a minute ago. Um, let me talk to you guys for a minute. Um, hopefully is resolved. Uh, I'm not Canadian. We went to Canada and got the hat. I thought it was cool. So, um, anyhow, so. You know, I think I think that's resolved, and it dawned on me. You know, I could boondock a little bit out here, and just kind of bring you guys along, just really to test everything. But I've done this before. It's finally cooled down out west here a little bit in the mornings. Um, about a month ago, even in the morning, it would already be heating up, and probably wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be very comfortable out here without AC. Uh, you know, everybody kind of knows when you boondock. Uh, unless you have a big bank of batteries um, and a bunch of solar which I don't I, you know maybe one day we will um, you know more solar more batteries then you can attempt an air conditioner right but for now I'm happy to just be able to run some devices and just kind of you know simulate boondocking test it out a little and be able to use the RV slightly more even though it's a storage facility um, you know just uh, uh, you know relax a little out here too and bring you guys along so i got uh, oliver down here hey buddy say hi the camera oh buddy hanging out with me for a little bit um, just got back from, uh, my brother-in-law like i started to tell you a minute ago bought a 37 like i say it's there i think it's a 37 footer um not a Jayco. I'll put the name of it on the screen. Uh, Rockwood, I think. Uh, travel trailer. You know, used. It's 2000, I believe it was 2005, 2008, something like that. Um, pretty good price on it. We had to haul it from Yuma to Blythe. Um, so it was a pretty good long day. You know, the drive time in between towing it and. Um, little more vehicle or a little more trailer length behind you makes a big difference towing it's you know on the turns you know obviously it's more trailer back there if anything i can say about it guys if you're new to uh, rving travel trailering i guess you could say um watch your mirrors really watch your mirrors i, I wish i would have done more of a video and i should have made more effort i probably could have had my brother-in-law videotape it a little more and I'll try and do things like that on this next trip. Um, you know, just, you know, there's a lot of safety concerns 
again we got another video on just kind of the truck you know we're coming with the ram 2500 diesel um but there's you know up and above hooking up and everything it's when you're actually driving and telling keep an eye on your mirrors you know keep an eye on your gauges keep an eye on your brakes um you know, you want to make sure that things are adjusted right. So do your research, do your homework. You know, it's nothing you want to take lightly, especially if you're new to it. You know, if I'm talking to the veterans, put comments below. I'm sure I'm missing things, but I just want to really kind of start the subject so we, you know, talk about it and learn from each other. But, um, yeah, there's 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 a fair amount to it. And there's a lot of people now getting into it and buying, especially travel trailers is what we've heard. Uh, when he picked his up, this person actually knew a dealer that said that they're just kind of right now with the whole COVID thing. People are, you know, just jumping into RVs because they feel it's like a safer environment. Um, they can control a little more as far as germs and whatnot, which is probably true. You know, you, if you go to a hotel room, hopefully it's clean well. Um, but on the same token, hopefully you clean your RV well. The other side of that too is, you know, if you... Um, you know, if you know, if you're already living with the family members and they're, they're RVing with you, it's more of a controlled thing. So it makes sense. I can totally understand the thought process is what I'm trying to say. So, um, again, I'm out here boondocking out of a storage bin for now just for a little bit. Uh, again, it dawned on me. Um, so let me turn it back around and just finish this little part of direct TV getting on and um, using running off battery, which... It's pretty neat. Um, it looks like it did find the satellites, which is good. So the scan portion went through. And the good news is it's, you know, I got basically three devices pulling power, power off the battery through the inverter. Um, and the inverter controller is not squawking yet. Now, if you saw, again, saw the other ones. Um, now, this is normal here. I have to go into and refresh it. I'm not going to do that right now. It's this is a typical thing when we see when we're out RVing and I if if anybody does have direct TV you go to the there's a refresh page you punch in basically I think it's your account or receiver number sends down a refresh code. Um you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that guys cuz I'm just going to take a few extra minutes to do this cuz I'm going to have to do it in another week or so. Uh, when we leave and I'd, I'd rather just do it now and get it over with so I'm going to pause you guys again I'll be right back and again I you know I could put a few instructions down in the comments how to do this it's pretty straightforward actually the same go to directtv.com forward slash 722 um, I really wasn't going to make the video about a direct tv portion but you know again this our channels for new RVers you know to have the a truck and tow stuff it doesn't need to be a ram uh, you know, whatever, because we're all learning about trucks, trailers, and now there's so much to RVing. You know, I, it's amazing. And yesterday, I kind of found that out too with my brother-in-law's RV. It's you know, it had sat for a while. There was a whole other bunch of issues. Oh, by the way, guys, I ordered a generator too. I'm going to do a video on that. Um, that's coming up too. I think it's a Champion. So, all right, I'm going to pause you guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Um, as you can see here, it uh, I wasn't able to send the refresh, but uh, they have a Direct TV. Sometimes you know now AT and T is involved. It's um, you know it's not as great as it used to be. Just to be honest, uh, it seems like there's another layer of AT and T in the middle of things. Um, they're claiming system update. So I'll have to get this done later. As far as what happens with DirecTV, they have to send a refresh code if you don't use a receiver for a while. It's normal. It's typical. Um, just trying to get it done now rather than do it in front of the road. And that's the other part I was going to kind of just quick point, and I don't want to make this video super long. Um, you know, it, you want to try and get as much done before you hit the road because, you know, on the road you have other things going on like setting up the trailer setting up the um you know getting in the campsite you know cooking different things like that so anything you can kind of do ahead of time to make your trip um i guess less stressful in that regard you should never really stress when you're on vacation but there's certain things you can do ahead of time that make it easier 
when you're on the road, you know. Uh, I mean, rather be, you know, making sure your tires are good to go, you know, safety concerns, brakes, make sure maintenance is pulled. Um, we just had the, the oil changed on the truck, you know, make sure that's good to go. Uh, you know, as a side note, I had always heard, I had a friend who's a mechanic, he said that you should always, um, you know, if, once you get the oil change, you should drive it for, you know, a small amount of time before you ever actually hit the open road. It's, for some reason, I don't quite understand, I'm not a mechanic, but it, it's something to do with the oil the so viscosity, I think it is, and how it kind of breaks down. It's easier on the motor if you let it kind of break down, you know, a couple short trips first, that type of thing, just FYI. You know, again, not a mechanic, leave a comment. Love to hear them. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm still on battery. Back to that. Everything seems fine. Uh, you know, the controller has stopped complaining. So I think it was an E02 arrow code that was having on the uh, inverter controller. And uh, evidently that was a battery, low battery condition, which I think some of the arrow codes did actually point to that. It was either a low battery condition or it seemed like it was a fault. And that's the part that had me a little worried that there was maybe a, you know, uh, God forbid, some type of wiring fault. But so far, it seems to have been the battery. It's been running about about a half an hour now before it wouldn't even make five minutes and it would start complaining again. So again, uh, we went to AGM battery. Uh, I'll put the exact uh, model number from Walmart. Um, I'm really lucky to be able to find one. They're a little more expensive. And I can probably do a review on one of those. I'll do it, try and do it in this next week. Um, you know, versus a standard lead acid battery, which did a little bit of research. They are cheaper um, from Walmart. Geez, either one of them are heavy. The AGM, I think it's 70 pounds. So it's practically a two-man lift getting it in there. Um, but there's supposed to be certain advantages. They're supposed to last longer. Um, they're supposed to you know really not have to vent it's so a little safer supposedly you can mount them at any angle i'm not positive about that we have it mounted just like we did the regular lead acid battery but if that's the case i'm sure people can get creative with them if you don't have to keep them in your typical lead acid battery up and down position which is kind of neat too um i guess this aluminum gas is what little bit of research i i read that uh, is at the crux of um, the battery itself, the AGM, and that allows it to uh, function more efficiently somehow. So it passes the when it actually produces electricity, it pass, uh, produces in a little more efficient manner, um, and it doesn't. It's a faster recharge and things like that. You can, um, I think, run it lower. Now, not positive about that part. Please do research on it. Again, not a mechanic, but leave a comment but uh you know they say that because of that you can actually uh run it down lower and then you get a quicker recharge so you know those are all big pretty big benefits um the, actually one of the better prices i found was at walmart there's different all kinds of different types um uh, battle born um i can't remember them all. i'll put it on the screen but that you can go with a lot of you know i've researched from amazon and other youtube channels people using uh, but happened to just pick it up at walmart actually they did a home delivery on it which was great made it that much better um, being how the other one was out and i couldn't really find many agms that was part of the problem it was on the walmart app you know um, of course there's amazon but again more pricey and their delivery times are pretty far out you know, uh, with the upcoming trip, I didn't want to take any chances of, of not getting it and not rectifying the situation. So there's times where, you know, again, pretty big Amazon person when I can because just the convenience. But Walmart has, um, this is a little known tip, guys. The trick you can use is actually you can use the pickup and delivery grocery app. And I don't think many people know this. It's kind of like Prime. I think it's $98 a year um, to actually avoid the, well, you're not avoiding the fee. You're still paying it $98 a year, but it breaks it down to about $8 a month versus, I think, 12 
on standard delivery. Um, although, and I'll get back to this in a minute, a lot of times the standard delivery is not available, but my point is you can order non-grocery items, some non-grocery items through there too, which is great. I mean, if you, especially if you're any distance from a Walmart. Um, now the downside is, back to the delivery real quick, there's never the standard delivery available, at least in our area. No time. So you always, so you avoid the standard, well you get a reduction in the standard delivery fee uh, by paying yearly, but you always still have to pay the express fee, which is usually $10 a month because there's no standard delivery available. So it's kind of wacky. Um, but it's still convenient, yeah, if you still have the fee. And I usually tip people, I don't, I try to be good that way is like help, you know, if, if I was out there delivering, I, you know, it'd be great if someone gave me a tip, you know, I, I don't know how much they make, you know, but I feel that we should always give back that way. So anyway, so I think for the battery, I ended up tipping $10, $15, something like that, you know, um, it ended up being close to a ten hundred dollar order, you know, because with the I think the battery was one sixty something, and then we had a few other items. So, you know, plus they held the battery out and, and things like that. Um, so that's just a little known side side note for Walmart, and it, it helps you with RV stuff, especially if you're in a kind of last minute scenario. Of course, you can always just go to Walmart or wherever your local. Uh, store maybe it's a target whatever to get things um, you know if, if you're last minute you don't want to wait for delivery that type of thing so there's a lot of options these days which is great you know um, just happen to work out I, I have heard the AGM batteries are very hard to come by uh, I kind of found that out because I did search several there's about oh probably three four different Walmarts in our area that you can within the app you can search around and check kind of check their inventory um, not 100% sure how updated it is but it, it did in this case it did happen to work actually tried to order an AGM battery the day before on the order and this is I know I'm kind of going down a side path about Walmart ordering but maybe it'll help someone they actually said it was available the day before but when the order compiled and they started sending it they dropped it out and said it wasn't available, which was disappointing, but I was kind of aware of it. Well, the second day, I just happened to try it again, thinking, you know, hey, maybe it will happen again, maybe not, and it did go through that time. So, little things about the Walmart app, people probably don't know, they're maybe used to Amazon, everybody's pretty well versed with it, but the Walmart side of things is, they're starting to get better. Uh, some of the fees are a little questionable still that's probably a negative against them on that regard but it is convenient you can get it the same day within a few hours without having to go in there it is that's my rant on that anyway so guys i'm still out here storage boondocking uh, i'm probably gonna wrap it up here in a minute oliver sitting here nicely still pretty cool out here but um seems like everything's working fine i'll do my direct tv refresh code later seeing how their systems are down um and then look forward you know please like and subscribe if you do like these um you know look forward to you know the agm battery review kind of did it a little bit here it's been great so far probably is worth the extra money hopefully i'll know especially after the trip um, we typically don't do a lot of boondocking but i guess kind of do here in storage and then you know when we take it to the house and start getting it ready i'll do a little bit there if it's cooler morning I'll go out there and you know maybe have a cup of coffee sometimes even work from the trailer um, from the RV and uh, you know now able to a lot of times we're on shore power there but um, now it's just nice knowing you can hook up the battery and it actually will run the TV or it's just small devices um, I haven't pushed the envelope as far as what the battery will technically run and I maybe we'll do a you know a video on that just to give people more insight you know, our, our RV, I think I explained in the other video, it's a little different because, you know, you have the inverter that's that's pulling power from the battery, which gets, we have one solar panel that's charging it. Um, so, but it's only certain devices. And I, from what I've found out so far, it's really just the ones up by the entertainment center. Um, 
but there may there may be other outlets. I really don't think so, but um, that that kind of drives out, and then I can throw another plug. Will actually run from the battery too. There's another switch, and I don't think it's running through that same um, system as far as the inverter because it will activate other plugs and allow for things like the slide to come out on battery and things of the, that type of nature. So it's different than the uh, inverter controller plug, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so, but it, bottom line, they're all run from the battery and we can do some testing and see, you know, how much of a load that will handle. Obviously, you know, the battery uh, will pull the slide out. It's meant for that or run the water pump, things like that. But will it run a microwave? That, you know, I don't know. Probably not. It's, I don't know that much about power and electricity. I'm still learning, even though we've had RVs for several years, but they're all kind of different. And now with solar and inverters and EGMs, everything's, you know, there's been another shift. And, you know, um, so if anybody can learn from these, you know, I really hope. That's my main goal. I love doing them because I'm learning, and in turn, maybe it will help somebody. Leave a comment if it does. And if it doesn't either, fine with that. Leave it. Um, comments a comment and that's that's a good thing we all learn from all of them so yeah i mean i'm going to wrap this up now um finish up my storage boondocking it's quiet out here it's kind of nice it's it's kind of like camping even though it's this one here is there's businesses i think back behind me and then there's residential all around and on the other side there's kind of a main road but where i'm out here in the storage uh, bin it's lot <laughs> been yeah it kind of feels like i've been being in an rv but um um it's far enough away from the road i don't even hear the road sitting here um so it's very quiet especially in the morning the neighbor over here i think he has a fifth wheel he pulled out so i got a little almost like a little <laughs> as if i'm sitting in an rv park you know with a if i wanted to i could probably pull the slide out and sit out there i'm not going to test it you know i don't know i don't think they really want you out here uh, doing something like this but if you're working in on your RV and your storage you know what are you to do you know it's in storage you know and you know sometimes you just have to work on things I we were out here the other night and we had to actually want to bring this up just briefly we had a little lock issue when we pulled it back out here after our last one day trip to the beach and it was one of the I forget the name of the locks the little gold lock I'll put a picture of it on the screen. I've actually done a review on those, and they've always been really solid. And we had an issue with it. We couldn't get the key in it. And, you know, this is another part. If you switch locks, make sure and put the old, take the old key off. Because I, in the process of us struggling with this lock, I found some old keys that never got removed from the chain, from the key chain. You know, I keep them all. <laughs> so always purge your keys. But that, I don't think that was the issue. This The lock got just... I think it just had a, to be honest, had a problem. Um, finally got the key in. Actually, we did have to hit it with a hammer a bit to get it to to budge. And it seems fine now, but, you know, we're out here for a while. The point is we're out here for, you know, longer than we normally are trying to fix it. So it just happens. Um, you know, would I ever do a major repair here? Probably not. You know, that's... For one, there's not room on each side, but again, there's certain times you got to come out and like now I'm picking up a few things and then wanted to test this. So there's times you're out here for a fair amount of time. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Again, please like and subscribe if you know if you like the channel, if you want to see more of these. I'll try and do these more of a regular basis, you know, especially with the trip coming up, I'll be able to. You know, eventually my goal is to try and, our goal, my wife and I, is to travel, you know, more often, almost semi-retired, heading towards retired, uh, to be able to do these, you know, on a regular basis. I'm really, it's so great that a lot of these channels are full-time and they're able to do that. It's just, more power to you guys. I, it, I just think it's awesome. All the great materials, so many of them put out. I'll put the name of some of the channels I've been watching lately and uh, a lot of couples and you learn so much you know and the RVing community is just awesome everybody's from what I 
can tell from over the years, our experiences have been very friendly. Um, even yesterday, my bro I felt far sorry for my brother-in-law. He had a small electrical issue with his. And the people at the park, at the new park he put it in, and they were very friendly. Um, there's a maintenance guy that's trying to help him. And, I mean, some great people. You meet people from all over. That's the other part, you know, about RV is, you know, you really get out and about and you meet people that, uh, from you know all different parts of the country and the world really and I think that's the fun part of getting out is is meeting different people seeing different um, you know change of scenery different locations and uh, you know when you get back home you kind of feel good it's like hey you know that's a pretty good experience because you're I guess more kind of out amongst them more you know rather than just flying in somewhere going to a hotel and you know, I don't really see a whole lot of people. I know RVing can kind of be like that too, but you know, a lot of times there's someone walking by or a maintenance guy to talk to. I mean, we literally had like a 20 minute conversation with yesterday um, with this maintenance guy and there's, you know, he's a great guy. He kind of told us a slight story. So, um, you know, that's great. And uh, anyhow, I'm gonna stop talking now um, and just let you know the next one will probably be on the battery and putting those steps, the carpet on those steps uh, before the trip. There's a few things we're trying to get done before we go. Um, and I'll try and include you guys on some of that. So anyhow, you guys have a great blessed day and we'll talk to you next time.